know, choosing symbols, um, it's really not a, an issue of quality or, or excellence of craftsmanship, which, which you've got with everything here. It's, it's really a matter of personal choice and how one wants to express himself. So, you know, uh, for my strange tastes, these are the babies that I would choose. The great thing is that you can make music with these. And Terry demonstrated that. I love those arrow crashes too because they have a bit of a china quality about it, a bit of a glassy quality about them. And uh, that hi-hat too has a, a traditional basis to it, but you can do very modern, unusual combinations of sounds. I, I agree with all, all of what Neil just said. It's, it, it's got all the bite of an AA hi-hat, which I wouldn't normally play, but that somehow kind of makes it sound a little more rustic and it kind of gives it a little bit more sort of, not trash, just sort of different color that I would be attracted to. And the compression hats sound better over here than when you're sitting on top of them, which tells me that's probably something I would use in the studio immediately. So I think that's the main thing, that they're very musical in their applications, and there are ways that you're finding just as you mentioned, oh, that, that, it does this, it does this. And I like, like the, the way that um, um, central hi-hat, I guess, the way it sounds kind of open. Mm. It's got a beautiful quarter note drive to it, and you're just hearing ways in which they can be applied in music. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm always drawn to the trashier, dirtier, you know, airy type of sound, and those, those, those air crashes are, you know, really very, as Neil said, musical. That's what I look for, too, so, and obviously the way you're playing them make them that much more musical. Oh, thank you. I just wish that every cymbal came with a Terry Bozio to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> well uh, or Mark Love. Yeah. <laughs> I wish that every note I played had a Mike Portnoy to listen to. <laughs> <laughs>